All right, well, welcome to the hearing of the local historic district commission. Uh, we seek to aid property owners in the town in preserving and protecting the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant to our history. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, extended by chapter two of the acts of 2023, this will be conducted by a remote means. Uh, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by a Zoom or by telephone. Um, okay, so the first item that we have on our agenda, I believe, is to talk about um, 4749 Fearing Street. Uh, is Chester Miss Mitchell here? No, I don't see anyone in the attendees right now that would be here for this project. We probably have enough information any way to go on. Um, do people, have, have the, has everybody seen the changes to the, here's Bruce, good. <clears throat> yeah, I can share my screen so we can look at the, um... so here's the existing conditions for 47 to 49 fearing. And so they they like to replace these steps. And there are some questions at the previous hearing, you know, what what they would actually look like, uh, how much do they cover here? And so the um what what the builder provided was, you know, plans saying that it'll look similar to this, you know, and they won't go all the way, right? It'll just go from railing to to bollard, six feet wide, uh, come out, you know, three or four steps, and then they'll cover the brick this brick with a similar existing, uh, you know, it looks like just actually like soffit um, paneling, but, and they submitted some, you know, additional information that this is the system they'd be using. So it's a Trex railing system and Trex decking. And this is probably a better picture of actually what it would look like. Could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, can you go back to the previous image uh, the existing conditions image or? Uh, yeah, I guess that was it. Because you said something about, um, yeah, you said uh, the brickwork. So when you said replacing it with something that looks similar to the vertical material that's right there now. Right. There. Right. So yeah. if you can see the cursor right there, just continue this yeah. over, They, you know, to patch this into the to this area. Yeah. And, and what is that stuff? Do you know? This yes, right here? It's, uh, yeah. it's soffit material. Usually, you can yeah. see by the ventilation, it's designed to allow air to pass through without insects passing through. Right. So it's instead of using, say, uh, um, something that's more open, they are using this to cover, to wrap the porch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's been like this. But... The stuff, the stuff on the other side it... looks different. Yeah. I think it's actually this stuff, and then here it was solid. I mean, my guess is at one point, right there, was a different kind of stairway here, yeah. and they did, they didn't, they just, they didn't clean it up when they, when they put this in. Hmm. I mean, it looks like it's a big improvement over what there's. It's going to look much better. Right. It doesn't seem like they're changing you know, anything other than just the stairs, right? So they're not going to touch the railings on the porch or anything or the columns, just mm -hmm. adding a new stair as, as shown here. And what's under the stairs there? Will that be more of the soffits? So, you know, the new stairs are going to come off from this column and here coming right. off straight, you know, they'll remove all of this, all of this here, and then they'll continue this trim all the way over to me right here. Oh, do you mean... Yes. Under the stairs here. Yep, that's what I was asking about. Yeah, I mean they. The way I'm ex, uh, understanding it'd be the same, but we could, you know, the commission could condition that that it, you know, it be something similar or you know different. I mean, in the images that are shown, you know, sometimes it's solid, and sometimes it's this. It's right. It's the this type of material. So we, if we wanted to not, you know, be this, we we could we should say that. I mean, to me, this is probably the most accurate example of what it would look like in terms of the railing and the risers and everything. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a um, 
another question, which is um, the use of treks in um, the local historic districts. Um, this is my first one of these meetings. So do you typically approve treks? Yeah, it has, wood? it has been approved. I mean, the visibility of the treks will be minimal. I mean, it'll just be on the treads. It's not. Oh, it's, it's not on the, the, the uprights are wood. Well, no, the, railing. so the railings are going to be a composite material. So, a, you know, a synthetic mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. I see. It says steps and rail. Um, so that probably is a Trek system. I, I mean, it's right. It's, yeah, it's a Trek, uh, right, the whole thing is a Trek system. So I think, yeah. you know, this is right. This is from yeah. like their catalog. Yeah. So when you look at this, um, the two things that stand out, if we want to be fussy, and I'm not sure whether we do, but you can see the top rail is a, a handrail. It's got a it's got a groove under it. So it's a, and the bottom rail is a, is a is kind of a two by four on flat. Then if we go to the original condition or the existing, you can see that the uh, the rail on the top here. Uh, of the balustrade is is not a a, a, a handrail thing. It's simply a flat uh, square section two by four on flat. And then if you go down to the bottom, you can see the two by four here is vertical and not horizontal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, I, I don't know whether we want to fuss with this uh, and ask them to put the two by four of the Trek system vertically rather than horizontally. It's the system probably is not well suited to that. This is a, a wood piece here, and it's probably uh, uh, fitted, uh, and it's probably quite good wood, you know, from an age when you can buy that and without paying a arm and a leg on the one hand or, or, or killing a spotted owl or something like that on the other. So maybe we just accept that the system will not exactly match this, but uh, but that the spacing of the balustrades, for example, they're square balustrade uh, balusters. These vertical elements are called balusters. Um, we could uh, um, just ask that the baluster spacing be uh, um, be be the uh, equivalent to the spacing. So this is wider here, mm -hmm. but it doesn't right. have to be wider. It could be uh, it could be equivalent, or we could just say, you know it's close enough and 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 it and it's okay i'm i'm uh i would pref I, I would my, myself i would say let them use the standard trex handrail profile and let them use the uh, the bottom rail horizontally instead of vertically but space the balances to match the uh the, the existing I like, I like that suggestion. I think the wide spacing of the balusters looks strange to me um, next to these close spacing ones up on the porch itself. The other issue that would come up if um, this this uh, railing is probably not grippable for stairs, it's, it's probably too um, wide. It just comes up with inspectors all the time for the handrail where treks like will be the right width to be grippable. I think you're right, Nicole. That's why I would ease up on the uh, on on. That's that's why I I said what I said. Uh, Steve. Yeah, um, I agree with everything Nicole. Um, what you both say. I, I don't. I think we should just lay this again until he comes in, because we could approve it and he'll he'll get what we're suggesting. We'll get lost between the lines and we'll put it up and then we'll like say it's fine the way it is. So, and I also think it's a bad practice, you know, for people not to show up um, and to listen to our concerns and have it uh, communicated secondhand. So I would move, I move that we delay this again until the contractor actually, you know, we've had people, you know, uh, convene with us from their cars, you know. So this is not, um, it's not that onerous to show up for 10 minutes, you know, to give us a presentation and to listen to what we have to say. So I, I, I move that we delay this once again. We have a second. Second. 
Sorry, I was going to say, we, we, can't, we can't delay it. We have to deny it. Yeah. And what because does that mean if we deny it? They have to reapply. Then they should reapply. I'm not sure it's going to change the plans at all. It'll just delay the project. Well, what I'm saying is you can, you know, uh, Meg, you're going to tell them that the handrail should be narrower and that the strut should be less, but uh, how is that enforceable? And they, they're, I mean, the guy can't even show up twice in a row for five, for 10 minutes. My feeling is he's going to put up the kit and then we're, he, you know, we're going to say that's fine. And if that's fine, then we should say that's fine. But if we have additional conditions, I think we should be able to communicate with the contractor directly so he can't say that he didn't understand because he wasn't here. I think that well, those conditions, if you wanted the spacing, that'd become a condition of the certificate and that'd be enforceable as part of the building permit. So it's not as if they could, you know, deviate from that. Hmm. I mean, that, that's the way, you know, so that's the way I would, if you were voting, even what Bruce was saying about the bottom rail, if you wanted to be a vertical orientation and not, not horizontal, say like this, those are things that become enforceable as conditions of the certificate. So you know, it wouldn't get lost in translation if those became conditions. Same with what you'd want to have happen underneath the stairs, uh, this area. So underneath the trim board, is it similar? It's showing different, um, you know, screening here. So would you want to say it's a, you know, the same material to come around here and wrap under the stairs? So those are the pieces of the conditions I would, whether the contractor's here or not, that's what I'd recommend as having be part of the the conditions. Bruce? Um, I guess what's I, what I hear Steve uh, saying or feeling maybe is that um, uh, that, that, that the, uh, the person who's doing this isn't here and hasn't bothered to come uh, twice and the, and the question before us could then become or the way to, I would interpret Steve's motion is that we are denying it because the fellow hasn't uh, uh, had the grace to uh, to come. So I guess, uh, Nate, are there extenuating circumstances here? I mean, usually either an owner or the contractor is very often the owner. Uh, but here we've had we've not seen the owner nor the contractor. Is there some reason why this is different and that we should not get to Jones by it? Or should we uh, say, you know, yes, this this is the first time in seven years that I've been here that nobody has bothered to show up twice in a row or even once in a row. So we could say, you know, uh, you're not going to get approval if you don't show up. But I've never, I haven't, we haven't, uh, we haven't crossed that bridge before. Yeah, I'm not sure that's actually part of the bylaw. You know, so we... Um... I think it's happened once or twice before for a project where someone hasn't, um, there was another one on um, maybe Fearing or McClellan where it was continued a few times until someone showed up or it, maybe it was even going to be denied. But the- um, Someone did show know, up in the end. I think it was like the fourth time. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. But, you know, the, you know, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I don't know if it's the contractor is not equipped to attend by Zoom or is not, doesn't know how to um, join the meeting because um, you know he's, it's not a, an architect. It's just it's a he's a builder, um, mm. but it's been communicated um, a few times. I know that there are some some contract contractors doing work actually in the local historic districts now that don't you know they still submit paper copies and hand, you can see the plans. It's hand drawn. They don't you know they don't have a smartphone and they don't you know they don't um, submit electronic applications. We enter into the system for them. Yeah, so I think this mm. is uh, the same type of contractor. Mm. Well, I think that, we... is that sorry, I think this is a relatively small project, and the contractor probably did not see this as you know a major thing that he was putting forward. Um, if we are, if we specify what we want in our um, response, and he's required to follow that, I'm not sure I see a reason for not allowing this to go forward at this point. I agree with Nancy. I, I agree. I think this is such an improvement to what there is. And he, this contractor probably thought this is so straightforward. 
and it's kind of a no brainer. So I'm not sure. I, I yes, we send a message that it's not important to show up, but I does one message go to the next contractor? If there are those contractors out there that are still sketching things by hand, I kind of, and, and they think this is straightforward. I have understanding for it because I think it's pretty straightforward too. Uh, I mean, I, I have no problem with that. I just, it's just whether my feeling is that what will happen, look, I can live with it because I didn't even notice what Bruce was pointing out. But my feeling is if we just okay it, he's just going to use the kit and then it's going to be a fait accompli, which I'm fine with because it is an improvement. But if we do want to um, have those changes and we do feel like those are important, I don't think uh, it should be communicated secondhand. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm easy either way. I just, um, you know, I, like I said, I didn't even notice what Bruce was pointing out or Nicole was pointing out, but mm -hmm. I, I do feel like that's going to go by the wayside um, if we don't talk to him directly. Um, I have a question. If um, we do approve it with the conditions that were specified by Bruce, and the contractor goes ahead and puts it in as the kit is shown, you know, what was um, given to us, then, um, Nate, what happens then? I mean, we could say you didn't follow the conditions and ask them to change it. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I mean, what I, my notes have, you know, I was actually going to recommend one more thing, but for, you know, things it discusses, you know, the baluster spacing, the vertical bottom rail, the screening mm -hmm. under the stairs, and then the kind of caps on the post, you know, do we want them to match mm -hmm. this or is, you know, how, um, you know, how detailed do we want it? You know, is it okay to have something like this that is slightly different than, than this? And so uh, to me, those are the few elements that we could condition approval with. Um, it's it seems to me that what's there now seems like uh, it certainly wasn't the original and I, and seems like it was a repair job of the maybe the last 20, 30 years. Um, so I feel like the kid is really an improvement to that. And I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether it makes sense to ask them to match something that was kind of a put together thing of the last 30 years and not a proper historical restoration. My guess is that the baluster balustrade on the porch is close to original, if not original. I think so. I don't know. But it's also funny that the um, the porch doesn't, it, I looked, I w was by the building this afternoon and in looking at it, it would seem that you would put a very broad porch between the two posts and the having a, a, a stairs come down and have it the, the the sides of it one on a vertical post and the other on the you know that uh, that short post it's just kind of a funny thing also it because i don't know why because of the two front doors it's not symmetrical so i mean i i think that the whatever the kit is and some modifications to that seem like such a great improvement hmm. There's another one next door that is a similar situation where they've made the stairs come down as part of the, the post, which is part of the railing as opposed to the vertical columns. There is a motion and it's been seconded, right? So I guess if we'd, at some point we'd have to take a vote on that motion okay. to continue and then. Or it could be withdrawn. That's what I was going to say. I mean, we uh, have a motion I, I, and a second, and then we we need to either vote on it or or the, or or have it withdrawn. I mean, since I made the motion, I'm happy to withdraw it. Um, uh, Invited the consensus. Well, if if uh, if 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 the motion is being withdrawn, I'll I'll propose. Uh, uh, um, uh, I'll propose a an a. a that we uh, uh, issue a certificate of appropriateness um, with the usual findings that it's consistent with sections eight point whatever and eight point whatever in the uh, and uh, and and compatible with the, the the district with the following conditions. 
Um, and the conditions that I would suggest would be that uh, that the uh, simply that we that the that the um, that the tracks baluster spacings uh, that that the tracks baluster section and spacing section meaning the the width the the the, the plan profile whether it's in uh, five quarter by five quarter or whatever that the section and spacing of the balusters match that of the existing uh, porch. Um, for the reason that Cole mentioned, I would, th th that's the motion. Um, and then I'm, I guess I'm, well, I'll, so I'm not putting a couple of other things in there. And, and partly, and Ned, I, I, I was thinking that keeping the, the caps the way they were, because those caps are outside and exposed to the weather, whereas the one on the porch is, is 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 not so much so i think having the perimeter caps to shed the water is is probably a good idea and as nicole pointed out i think it was nicole uh the the the, the inclined rails um having the grip section is probably a good idea and and i think that the probably the track system the, the material requires that it be a horizontal rather than vertical i, I think there might be a durability problem in forcing the uh um because the, the the way in which you'd have to attach the balusters to the bottom rail would be with angled nails to work okay in wood, but with the treks, I'm sure they're screwing up from the bottom into the. So I think that the that the section that they have is probably consistent and necessary with the material they're using. So I would make the single condition that the. Uh, Oh, maybe there's another condition. The single condition, as I said, that the section and spacing of the balusters match that of the porch, existing porch, uh, and that the uh, triangular infill under the uh, stair match the the uh, infill um, of the existing porch. So Do we have a, a second for that motion. I second. Okay, uh, Karen. Um. Yeah, I'm, when you when you say that you want the treks to be in spacing equal to those very narrow, unusually narrow ones on the bed, is that something that's going to be really hard for them to do? Because um, it's have you seen the ones going upstairs with the balusters so close together? I'm not sure I have. It's it, it might be really hard for them to do that. I'm just wondering. I don't think so. You don't think I mean, so? I mean, I've built porches like that before many times, actually, in various places over many years. And I wouldn't, you know, you, you drill pilot holes, you put trim screws in. I I don't think it would be difficult. Okay. I think it would look a lot better, uh, personally. It would look a lot better, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I would, for example, probably fabricate the thing um, you know, on a horizontal plane on a, on a table and then install the whole thing. I wouldn't try and piece it together in place. That's is, if is, I there was doing more, it. is there more discussion before we vote? Okay, uh, well then let's vote. I'll start with Bruce. Aye. Uh, Steve? Aye. Nicole? Aye. Karen? Aye. Elizabeth? Aye. Greta? Aye. And I agree also. So uh, those are the conditions that we would like on the certificate, Nate? Sure. All right. So then we can move to our next item, uh, which is 10104 North Prospect. Uh, this is integrity development to construct an 18 by 25 foot addition to their rear southwest corner. Um, including utilities, lighting, and associated improvements. Nate, yeah, do you there, have things you want to say? If there's anyone from Integrity here, you could raise your hand and provide a presentation. We're going to, Anna, we'll make you a panelist. And Nicole as well. Hmm. <laughs>
Just trying to open my video here. Hello, Kyle Hello. from Taggart. How are you? So I believe. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Nicole, who's from our office, is sitting in as well. I don't know um, if she can unmute. Yeah, there you are. Hi. Hi. So, um, and I, I know the homeowners here as well, just kind of observing. So, um, so yeah, this is a uh, addition to a structure that we built finishing in 2018. Um, the original structure was a uh, Coldham Hartman project that we bid on and, and got. So finished in 2018, um, it is, as far as aesthetics go, it's a match to the um, structure that we built. It's a uh, wood painted, barn board siding with um, what was called integrity, but now just Marvin elevate windows with a four over one grill. Um, I don't actually believe there's any exterior lighting on this. Uh, Correct. Asphalt, the roof to match, same pitch to match. Um, it is intended as an aging in place um, addition. That was schematically drawn on the plans back in 2017, I believe, whenever it went through um, town approvals process. So this is the, the building of that structure, um, trying to stick with everything as closely as possible to what was intended back in 2018. Uh, only notable differences are a slight footprint change. I think it is slightly deeper from, Nicole, was it north to south, but not quite as deep from east to west? I think it was just to accommodate the interior, something in within a foot or so in either direction, though. Uh, I'm afraid I don't remember off the top of yeah, my head since it, I didn't draw the original. Yeah, I mean, I could look that up. I, I forget, but it, it's within a foot or, or so in either direction and smaller than the original footprint. Um, still within the the setback um, of what's required there. We do have to disassemble a small section of retaining wall in order to get the excavator in there and to maintain uh, a flat space for like a lawnmower to access the other section of yard because it is slightly built into a hill. Um, aside from that, I guess I'm, I'm open to any questions. Questions from the committee? I was just gonna walk through it quickly if you don't mind, I'll just share the screen. Okay. And um, right, so what's being proposed, if this is visible for everyone, is this back piece here. Um, I'll just go to the next page. When um, you know, there's this addition off the off the corner here. When it was originally approved, this addition was just moved to be in the middle of this building. And so previously, the commission approved it. Um, up in this location, uh, and the difference also being that this one right now has a um, the original um, addition had just a shed roof, and this one has you know a peaked roof to match what's being built. So uh, you know, as as Integrity said, the you know the look and feel of the building is to match what was already you know the newer addition from eighteen uh, in terms of window siding, roof, and trim, and everything. So this is just you know, here's from the back what it'll look like with a slope roof uh, and windows. And I think... I apologize about that. I, uh, yeah, I, mean, I did think that... a little bit. I think it was on the, on the south side, it was in alignment with the building and it went forward north. I'm looking at the Berkshire design, so... Right, so here, yeah, I think this shows up nicely in terms of what it will look like. It's, you know, it's, it is slightly visible, so, you know, it's set back from North Prospect Street, and it could be visible from North Prospect, uh, even maybe McClellan, depending on time of year, but it, you know, it's not as if it's on the street. Uh, Bruce. Um, uh, you said that uh, this was a Coldham and Hartman, uh, um, had uh, some association Kuhn, with Kuhn that. Riddle. Um, Kuhn Riddle. That's better because yeah. uh, first of all, I would have <laughs> had to uh, made some comment. I of, saw you, uh, and my mind went right to to Colton yeah. Hartman. And the second was I had no recollection of it, and I thought uh, <laughs> this is this is disturbing. But uh, so that is uh, that's very helpful. Okay, yeah. so the second question is: Is there a site plan? Um, I mean, it, it, it is because I, I I here we've got. Build, or, uh, building plans, but I don't see a site plan, at least not in the packet. 
that I could find. So, yeah. but you mentioned virtual design a moment ago. Hey, is it, is it easy enough to pull is... that up? All right, I might be able to share it. Yeah, Nicole or um, you can share as panelists. I'll stop my share just to allow. Do we not have one as part of the package? I didn't yeah. see one, no. Okay, neither did I. So, But then I often miss things, so. Yeah, um, it, sorry, it, it was uploaded as part of the building permit. Maybe it didn't make its way over to historic, but I can pull it up. I can just figure out how to use Zoom real quick. <laughs> <laughs> So if it was part of the building permits. Well, while you're doing that, I, I have to say it, it, it looks nice. So Kuhn Riddle did the original and, and Integrity is uh, fully responsible for the design of this current. Do I understand correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it looks nice. Um... That's my personal opinion so that's as far as it goes thank you sure i can share a screen now quickly yeah I, well you're probably quicker at it than i am i have it pulled up but i'm not sharing it <laughs> is this the site plan uh, no we've got a stamped one from july um, okay yeah just i guess just so i mean this is nice uh, for the commission and everyone just you know here's north prospect street you know here's oh. where the addition is going back here okay um, and so, uh, you know, it's not, it's not on the street necessarily, or yeah. it'll be, it, you know, if you walk it, you, you can see it from the sidewalk, you'll be able to see, you know, see this, but it's not, yeah, not too visible. Um, I do have the Berkshire design one that pulled up and I could share that if that's helpful, because a little bit more, uh, feedback as far as, you know, where there are trees, et cetera. Sure. That'd be great. Um, it's, it's disabled on my end. Is that something that we can allow? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes, I can. Can you try it now? Okay, now no, I can. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hopefully everyone can see that now. Um, the... Uh, Original structure, which is uh, 100, which is in the, the bottom of the southeast corner of, of the plot here. Um, although you you can see it, I suppose, going down from, from Halleck, um, their main access is from Pease. And so you do have, uh, you do have a house right across the way um, in the corner of Halleck and North Prospect. And then there's a pretty large tree that they don't show right between those two. Well, you can actually sort of see the canopy, I believe, um, coming out of the corner of what they're marking as like 94, 96, two and a half story wood frame. So there's a canopy there and a tree, which does uh, in, a, in a big way shade um, what you could see from Halleck Street of the structure. Um, and then there's the, the dashed lines um, off the southwest corner of 102 to 104, which is the proposed addition. Right. So I was going to just annotate this quickly. So for the commissioners and the public, this is the addition back here. You know, there's this existing house here. Yep. And here's the street. So, you know, there is a structure in front of it. And so, right. And then Peace Place is private. So there's not any consideration in terms of the view, the view from Peace Place. It's really just from you know, the visibility from the public mm. way. Right. Yes, we've had a couple of uh, projects on peace before, which is, uh, so I'm not sure, maybe they weren't actually on peace. Sure or, they're they were. They're, or they're visible from other public ways. So the, yes, that's, that's, that's yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> they were. Okay, well, that, that's helpful. And uh, so it is very discreet. And uh, not that that could. Uh, uh, that's enough of the site plan from my point of view. Are there other comments from the committee? I was by there this afternoon, and you you can 
barely see the addition as it is, mm -hmm. let alone the addition, I mean, not the addition, that that um, structure yeah. in the back. Mm -hmm. So the addition, I think, would even be less visible. Any other thoughts? Do I have a motion to issue a certificate of... Oh, I'll I'll do that if you like, or does someone maybe someone else would like to? Because uh, yeah, no, I won't. Do, I'll 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 keep quiet. <laughs> I was going to stop your sharing just so I don't know if we need yeah. that anything okay. else. Yeah. I'll motion to give a certificate um, as as described. As described. Um, do I have a second? Thank you. A second. Uh, do we have more discussion? Uh, all right, let's move to a vote. Uh, Greta? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Karin? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Steve? Uh, Bruce? Yes. Uh, and I also agree. So uh, we have approved your certificate. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming and for explaining this to us. That was very helpful to us. All right, you're welcome. Thanks. All Thanks. right, thank you. That brings us to uh, review and vote on the second 90-day extension for Amherst Media Certificate of Appropriateness. Uh, Nate, do you have things you wanna tell us about that? We've just gotten some updated information from them. Yeah, I was, um, it looks like they're here, but the, um, they have applied for a building permit. Um, but the, the way the rules work is that work has to commence within, you know, say the certificate period. And so, you know, I'd recommend granting a second 90 day extension, uh, just so that you know, there is no, I mean, I guess that's the commission's decision, but they have submitted a building permit. They just have to get through the, the process and have that be issued. But the, uh, 90 day extension does expire in like three or four days. And so essentially the certificate would then expire. And so a second 90 day would just continue that on. Steve, uh, you're on mute. Steve, you're on mute. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. So does that mean they're ready to break ground? Well, I think the, the next item on the agenda is for them to present some some of their submittals, material submittals, and there's a few changes to the plans and they could answer that. We could pull, I'll pull them in actually right now. If anyone's here for Amherst Media, you could raise your hand and we can make you a panelist. While that's happening, Nate, is there a reason to make this two separate motions? Possibly no. there is. There is, yeah, I think so. Yeah, sorry, I emailed with Nancy and this. So I think the first order of business is really this a request for a second 90 day extension. And the second um, point of discussion topic on the agenda is review of, um, you know, possible changes to the building and uh, the, the submittals. And so there's really just two separate items to discuss and vote on. Right? Okay, well, I'll, I'll move that uh, we. Uh... Uh, grants a, a second 90-day extension to the previously issued certificate of appropriateness for the Amherst Media second? project on um, whatever it is on High Street. I second. Uh, discussion. Main, Main Street. Greta? Is there a limit of how many extensions we give, or is that just up to us? Yeah, there's no limit. It's up to the commission. So I think, you know, in this case, they have, you know, they are trying to move things forward. It could be right that an applicant, um, you know, a year goes by and then you might issue an extension or two and really there's no advancement to the plans, right? They don't come back to speak to town or something. And then the recommendation might be to not issue an extension. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this it's kind of a case by case, but. Thank you. Other questions? Well, let's move to a vote then on the extension. Uh, Elizabeth? Aye. Uh, Karin? Aye. Rita? Yes. Aye. Nicole? Yes. Steve? Yep. Uh, Bruce? Yes. 
Steve? Yes. Uh, and I agree to, so they, we have granted them then the extension and let's move to the second part of this, Nate. Sure. Uh, Tris, you're here as he's a, he's the architect with Amherst Media. I don't know if you want to walk through. I'll, I'll get things pulled up actually so we can share the screen. Uh, and so. Let's see. So, you know, the Amherst Media, is re they returned previously to review a few changes. This is I can't believe, I guess it's a few years ago. And according to the certificate, the commission can review the changes to determine if they're, you know, in keeping with the certificate or if they're substantial enough to require a new hearing. And then part of the certificate also asked that Amherst Media return to the commission to review specific information before a building permit is issued. So, um, you know, what the, say, uh, window trim and uh, specifications for the shingles and windows would be. And so that's what they're here to do today, you know, right now at this discussion. Um, and I sent an email uh, this afternoon, you know, there, I had um, found that there on, on the, one of the plans it looked like there could be some vents, you know, louvers on the exterior of the facade that weren't on the plans. And it was determined that those won't actually uh, be necessary. So there's already louvers shown on the plans that were approved. And so really the changes were what were noted before is just the selection of a gutter profile. Um, and then the change to windows um, on the front facing Main Street. Would you, would you like me to present? Sure. Okay, good. My voice, you hear my voice, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the main change was the fact that uh, the original south central pediment, uh, the ground plane uh, had three single double hug windows, and one of them falls right in a closet. And so what we did was to <clears throat> basically make what are called mulled. When you put two double hunks together, it's called a mulled window. Um, and the east and west ends of the south elevation have that. So we just created two more in the middle that leave the very central part of the that central pediment elevation as clabberts so that we could have a double set in each room, but not in the closet. That's the only change. The other, well, do you want me to go over the second change? Or let me just I... share my screen, uh, my screen uh, quickly. Yes, it would help to see this. Yeah, so what was approved, if this is visible, was in this, um, you know, so here are the double hungs on the east and west, but in this central pediment that was described, there's three three individual windows. And what's being proposed is, um, you know, as so I highlighted it here, now is two double hung windows. Note the, yeah. the eight, the, the round window, I don't know how it got erased, but there's supposed to be a round window above that. Right. It's in my drawing and it's also in the cover. It probably just yeah. got erased. Yeah, and I think it was just light enough that it didn't get yeah, yeah. scanned well, but right. So the really, I mean, what I, I highlighted, what would, would have been, what what is the change? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have my drawing that I sent with the full set? It might look better. Um, I do have the full set. I just have to uh, scroll, scroll the through. The architectural, yeah. Scroll through and find it. Um, Those are all structural. There we go. Yeah, actually, why don't we stay on these color? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you can see in the central image there, well, yeah, the, the middle image, um, there's a pair, there's a, a mold or a paired double hung on each end, east and west. So now it'll be east and west plus two more in the middle. And then if you go to the elevation, which is four pages away, um, sorry, you have to blow it up. I don't know. Oh, yeah, here we are. Right there. Yeah, it's a blow zoom that in. There. So it'll be one, two, three, four mold sets um, as the only change. 
to avoid the window in the closet. Yeah. So basically, just the change is that where we had uh, three single windows, we now have two uh, pairs. Yes, correct. Uh, do I have questions from the committee? Or comments? I, I have a question um, about the, the look of it. Um, I was thinking that, I don't know anything about your closet, but that the three sort of looked um, very symmetrical, you know, in keeping with the uh, neoclassical design. But I, one, I'm, I'm not sure about the double, the two doubles and the general appearance of that. Does anyone have a, else have a thought on that? Because that is your main facade, right? That is the main Correct. thing that's like front and center, right? Correct. It doesn't, uh, I didn't find it um, significantly um, different, I guess. I can see what you're saying, I think, uh, Elizabeth, the, uh, but it's, it's um, with, with the, uh, with, with the overall complexity of the building, it doesn't uh, seem to me to be um, uh, un reasonably um, at odds with um, the general intention or the general presentation. Um, but, you know, I'm... Chris, when I'm you were considering this, did you have another option? Did, was, did something else come to mind besides two doubles? There really wasn't another option. I mean, you could come up with other options, but this seemed to be the only way to avoid the window in the middle of the of the wall where it would put it in the closet. Um, I think having pairs of double hungs is con is in keeping with the other, you know, the two ends of the building which flank it. So mm -hmm. you basically have a rhythm of four mulled double hungs, and so it just seemed more appropriate. Can, can we see how it was before? Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was right. Yeah, there, right there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see the problem, but it does look less symmetrical. It, it is kind of strange. But it's, I mean, it's the, the symmetry is this, it's still, uh, this, it's still symmetrical. We haven't changed the, the symmetry, is we've changed the, the design, but we haven't made it asymmetrical. It's still symmetrical. Correct. It can be symmetrical, but it's a completely different aesthetic feeling. Yes, but I think, uh, I don't think it's our job to. I mean, uh, uh, I'm thinking about how would I have felt if if the original proposal had have had two um, paired uh, double hungs instead of three singles, and I I don't if, uh, I don't think at the time I would have cared one way or the other. So I'm basically uh, um, thinking about how I would have thought, um, golly, four years ago when we last looked at this seriously. Do you, um, I, th I think you we have to give you the possibility of not having the window in the closet, that's for sure. Um, if you, can you move those double hung windows a little bit more to the center? I don't know, mm -hmm. somehow it's- yeah, I, I agree, I think that's possible. So in other words, maybe what's, what's going on in our mind is that the amount of clabbered space is too big between the windows. So yeah. if they came closer together, then there'd be more of a balance of clabbered, clabbered uh, panels. Or maybe bigger windows. Well, the same size, I think, is more appropriate. Yeah. But, but yeah, I like, 
I like that idea because with a little round uh, window at the top and moving <laughs> it together, then maybe that first facade somehow just aesthetically is going to look more balanced. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. And um, when I drew it, 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 I kind of like it. It's not centered in the room, so they were brought together, but um, it, it probably sh should come together a little bit more. So we could make that a condition, um, and but to define it, I would say probably no more than 12 inches for each one Steve? to come toward the center. Yeah, can, I, can I ask mm -hmm. a, uh, what is probably a really stupid question? What's wrong with, I have windows that go into my closet. Too. <laughs> Why can't there be like a window in the closet and it's just a shade pulled in? I mean, that would be better. Well, is there a reason why you can't have a window in a closet? Well, according Pointless. to Jim Lesko, the director, he said that it would make it very difficult for what's going on in that room um, with equipment. And um, it makes, in the, st the storage is already limited, so it makes the closet smaller. And it also makes it difficult for the setup of their um, computers and, and desks. So it was. It was not. He 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 did not want to. He, he was. He did not want to see that happen. So I just had a quick question. In this plan, it shows that there's the closet. Looks like there's like an alcove by the window in the middle here, but not necessarily a closet. Is that? Has this yeah. floor plan changed? I guess I'm. The, the closet. Um, the closet or is would be bigger. It would be bigger. Yeah. Okay. But you could block out the window. I mean, that's a common thing, so that it doesn't function as a window from the inside, but it provides you with the symmetry on the outside, or the look, the neoclassical look on the outside. Um, but you do, you do want light on the inside too. You want this to be a nice space to be, uh, you know, working in. We have to sort of consider that this has to be a really wonderful working space inside and to have a window that's just blacked out is a shame. I think as much light as you can get into a building is what I think is great. Yeah, I think blocked out windows are, they look like a mistake because they are a mistake. The only time that I've seen them where it has any kind of appropriateness is like you'll see on the side of a building where a staircase crosses over a window, they'll yeah. sometimes fill that window with clapboards because the staircase would be there, uh, but it doesn't, it, you know, I, I, I don't think it's a preferred design direction. Mm -hmm. It was common uh, 300 years ago in England when they had window taxes. <laughs> so they would paint a window on because it wasn't taxed, but I don't think we're, uh, we've evolved since then. Yeah. And then just a quick question. Right now, it looks like the spacing from the window to the, uh, you know, exterior edge is similar to what's over on the other side. Yeah. That might just be, you know, I don't know how accurate that is. So, you know, I just want to make sure that if we bring these two toward the center that we're not throwing off, you know, these other proportions, right? Um, right. Yeah. So, you know, so I'm saying like this distance you know, this distance, this distance, and this distance, are they, I, well, I'm not sure they're equal right now, but. I think you get to choose. Uh, the uh, Currently, the, the the spacing is uh, more consistent with the one on the uh, on the west side, which right. is to say the left Here. side. But what, yeah. Chris, uh, what Tristan and others are suggesting, I think, is it more likely matches the one on the uh, east, side. Uh, right. Uh, right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think bringing them slightly together you know, six to 12 inches more, which would reduce the center wall by, you know, a foot to two feet, which is, be, you know, a significant amount. I wouldn't think you'd want to do it more than that. Hmm. Why did we just say match the uh, the clapboard spacing on the eastern side rather than the western side? Okay. That, that way, that way we could, that's an, that's an easy way of uh, expressing it. And uh, you, you could probably tell us from the dimension plans uh, whether that was a foot because it looks like it might be about a foot. Okay. 
That sounds good. I think if you bring those, if you lessen that a uh, clabbered space in the middle too and move them more toward the center, actually it'll look better with that whole facade of, of windows next to it too. I think it'll be just a, an aesthetic improvement. And you know, I think somehow the eye doesn't necessarily to be beautiful, it doesn't necessarily have to have symmetry as we know from you know, Greeks sometimes not being symmetrical has more aesthetic value. So uh, yeah, I would I would approve it just as you said to, to bring them more close together and um and and as you design it you'll I, th I think you'll get a good feel for what's going to really look nice. Do I, do I have a motion to approve this with those windows moved closer to well, each I, other? I, I think yeah, Chris Steve has, has another, he has more uh, changes. Well, well, Steve has, his, has had his hand up. I just want to make sure. We're yeah, calling I think him. that was from an earlier comment. Yeah. Steve, you're. No, uh, no, Steve, Steve doesn't meant to lower his hand. So it's uh, my mistake. Sorry. Yeah. Nate, were there other changes that we need to be talking about first? I'll, I'll just. Um... I'm sorry, I'm just gonna scroll. So what I had also noted um, in the mechanical plans, they showed that um, there could be, you know, a vent here on this side and then a vent facing Gray Street and not maybe making use of these louvers that were shown on the plans. And the email today, what the email today was, you know, from Tris was saying, no, that the they can use these louvers that were shown here so they don't have to put a new one, you know, facing Main Street or facing Gray Street. And so, I think the only other change that was noted was the um, profile of the gutters, you know, which is. Uh... There also was, um, Nate, the uh, bathroom vent. Um, right, the bathroom vent. We could remove, there's one approved on the front. We could get rid of that and put it in the roof or in the soffit. And so that's a, yeah, see, that shows it in the roof. And it could go into the soffit. Right, and so here is the, you know, there'll be a right uh, vent there, and then um, what is shown is uh, um, on the plans we were looking at earlier were better. Yeah, so here is you know there's already a vent shown up yeah, in the soffit, and so it could just be that it follows, you know, is located somewhere along that band and not on the roof. But I think if we got rid of it completely on the band, so you don't see it at all, it would be better to come out the soffit or on the roof. Oh, the soffit, right. Okay, if you want to come out the soffit. Yes, I agree. I think uh, it um, it looks awkward on that. Um, yeah. It's, I it's, don't know what the absolutely. term would be. Yeah. Breeze board, I suppose. Other comments? Uh, do we have a motion? And then hold on, just as we're oh. talking about it. Sorry, there's a lot of information here. Um, for materials, just oh, right. just so that we're everyone can see what we've what they've. Um, it was a PDF I put together with a series of specs. It was yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, there's just so many uh so much information here. Let me uh this isn't it. Ah, uh, sorry, here it is. Yes. Okay. So starting on this one here, this is shows the elevation um and then the um colors. Um it notes the railing. Okay, this this it was a request for the railing. So the, the railing is the same as approved, but it would be in a dark um, sort of a gray color. Um, and the sign was also mentioned and that that's not changed, that's shown there. And I thought maybe to use the background color similar to the upper part, the freeze up above. So it would contrast more with the stones of the sign. Um, and then what else, if you switch to the next image, 
Okay, there's the roof shingle proposed. It's a it's a regular asphalt shingle. They color it to create a shadow effect so it looks like a thicker slate. It's kind of like um just gives more texture and feeling to the roof rather than just a solid gray coat of paint. Um, that's what, what we propose. And then the next, okay, this is this is good here. This talks about the gutter. All this shows. If you look in the bottom left, you'll see the crown gutter. It's a K-type gutter is a, is a fake crown gutter. That's a mitered corner. But on the right, it's cut off blunt. And you can see up above, you can see what a blunt cut off crown gutter looks like. I personally hate them. They're fake. They're inappropriate. They're everywhere. And so what I'm proposing is a real crown wood and then a, a round gutter hanging below it. Um, I know when I did the preservation of historic Northampton, the Parsons house, uh, that had a, a, a crown and then it had a, a wooden gutter hanging below. It's kind of a, an oval, it was, kind of, it was made out of wood, but, but so anyway, and I checked in perfectly round uh, galvanized or painted gutters are the most appropriate for historic buildings. So this doesn't show what we're proposing. It, this just showed the difference between a, a mitered K-type gutter on the left and then the, the, the unfortunate looking chopped off end crown. Mm -hmm. Don't want to use. And, and Gillen's drawings, he had it very rough sketches and it was not clear whether he, I, I don't think he was mattering the, the crown gutters. So um, our drawings are going to show the, the or they do show the um, crown molding and a round gutter hanging below. And this is the detail of the um, door, the main front door. Um, which is all glass. It's in the elevations, the same. Today, I sent a color photograph, which was missing in this set, but it looks exactly like the elevation. And then the windows are also Marvin, um, which are double hung, single, one over one, double hung windows. We're gonna be using a single hung window because a single hung window looks identical to a double hung. It's just that it's more environmentally efficient. And the only reason you don't want single hung windows is when they're on upper stories, it's harder to clean the window. But on the ground level, no problem cleaning. It's much better to go with the efficient single hung. Um, but it, again, looks just like the elevation and, and that, that's a single hung detail. And that's the inside of it. Yeah, I think that's the end of this sheet. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I you did show the gutters. Separate, separate one was the door. Yeah. I mean, the door, so the door is shown here. It's like you said, it's never, it hasn't changed. It's just that they oh. provided, you yeah. know, an image of what it would look like. Yeah. And you did show the gutters and one, one of these plan sets, I guess I just would need yeah. to. The big yes, set, I... the one that starts out with the color image. The, the is... three, yeah, that's set. If you go further in, um, well, to the elevation should be in. Well, okay, no details. There we go. Yeah. yeah so here, yeah, there, there it is. Yeah. So it's a round gutter hung below a true crown. Oops. Sorry, I zoomed in. There we go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Elizabeth. I have a few questions. So the gutter is four inches. Correct. I on most historic buildings now they're recommending six inches. I don't know what it's like for new construction. Seven by well, that's seven. four inch radius. It'd be eight inch in diameter. So it'd be eight inch. Well, seven inches is what you've got on the bottom there. Yeah. So you think that's that? I guess you're. I guess I'm asking is given um, more frequent rainstorms and all and um, to, you know need to move the water away from the building if you think that's sufficient. Yeah, I think it is it's the number of downspouts that would affect the ability to not overflow. 
Um, yep. Chris, I, if I could interrupt here, I think that uh, when we're talking about uh, heavy rains, um, the, if, if you have really heavy rains, it's not the size of the gutter, at least from a capacity point of view, it's the uh, how far out from the building it comes. Because if you get a torrential rain, it'll probably uh, run past the. Uh... Well, I'm not sure about that. I don't know what I'm. I don't know enough. To... I don't. I don't know enough about what I'm talking yeah. about to in declare. Metal roof would be, in a metal roof, you'd be correct. It would slide off, but I think in a the textured shingle roof, it would it would run slower. Okay. Another thing which good can point. happen, which I think is a good idea in any gutter system, is to leave the end cap off. And so what happens is if you get leaves filling your downspout, then the water can run right out the end like a scupper and it'll blow those leaves out. Um, the end cap, in it, so if the water that's coming to the downspout, it comes to the downspout before it gets to the end cap. Um, it's just it's just a comment. I um, yeah. advice to prevent clogging of drains. Yes, that's probably outside our province. It might be something that other um, others, I mean, maybe the Conservation Commission who don't actually have an interest in this parcel, so I guess not them, but I think that's beyond our purview. Okay. But interesting next... to hear nonetheless. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. <laughs> My next question, <laughs> oh, I had a question <laughs> about the colors and how you chose those. Um, They weren't specified i just there's stone walls stone sign um the slate gray roof uh i just thought versions of earthy stone color was appropriate rather than bringing in some other hue mm. and then I mean, does during somebody... the, i'll say during the hearing you know they mentioned gray tones or light tones. I mean, the district doesn't actually regulate color. I guess we could have recommendations, but it couldn't be a condition or anything. I just wonder. Um, are we ready for a, a, a motion to, uh, I guess the motion would be uh, that the changes as presented uh, are, I, uh, are acceptable and and uh, are not determined to uh, are, are are determined to be de minimis, are approved and determined to be de minimis, right. and therefore not generating. And but I think if we just say that they're de minimis, that's all we need to say, right? Right. I think we could add to it that the um, submittals are also um, in accordance with the certificate, or you know, right. So for instance, if the roof all of a sudden the roof shingle were <laughs> We maybe we just fold it all in is also de minimis, right, or something. But mm -hmm. if we thought that the submittal was inappropriate, we could comment on that now. But... Do we need to mention the uh, closing the gap between those two double hung windows? Yes. Do we have a second for that motion? I second. Thank you. Uh, other comments on this motion? Before we move to the uh, Bruce, just a question for, for Nate. You have a you have the mo you have a motion. Uh, uh, I mean, what I uh, what I moved was hardly uh, hardly hardly literal, and I didn't actually say the uh, the, the, the that was a condition. So, uh, but but we we do. Do you are you comfortable with the way in which the motion has been uh, expressed that involves the uh, the de minimisness of the change? That the that the uh, uh, the the um, that the that the uh, the changes that the, cha the change to the window configuration as proposed is acceptable on condition mm -hmm. that the uh, spacing is adjusted according as as uh, as discussed. And I think that's yeah. And I think that the submittals are in accordance with the certificate. So I think the okay, motion those three, those three yeah, things. Yeah, the motion can be amended to, for that. I'd be comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. So that 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 will therefore be uh, my motion, and uh, I, uh, I, I, whoever seconded is that is that is that I probably a, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. We seem to be okay. 
Is there more commentary before we move to the vote? Uh, okay, Elizabeth? Aye. Karen? Aye. Frida? Aye. Nicole? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bruce? Yep. And I also vote yes. So uh, we are granting you uh, a certificate of appropriateness uh, with de minimis changes, but moving those two double hungs a little bit closer together. Uh, yeah, just to clarify, yeah, no certificate, but we'll just have a meeting summary okay. that'll be attached to the certificate. And so then that'll be sent out. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tris, for coming to the meeting and explaining Thanks. all of these things so clearly to all of us and Thanks, for Tris. all of the Thank things you. you submitted beforehand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you, Tris. You're looking great. Yeah. <laughs> so are you. Hey, <laughs> I'm turning 80 in a couple of days, so <laughs> got to hang in there. They say yeah. architects never retire, right? You didn't retire. You look what you're doing. I'm just being a carpenter again. Hell, you're. <laughs> I'm building habitat houses. Good, good for you. Hey. Uh, this brings us to the discussion of East Amherst as a potential historic district, and I think Steve wanted to talk about the Dropbox as part of this. Yeah, Nate, can you pull that up? I know that people are sick of me whoops, talking about Dropbox, but I think you'll see once you pull it up why it's going to be very useful. Steve, I want to thank you for all your work in making it possible for us to use this Dropbox. Oh, yeah. As no, I've actually, that's the first thing I should report is that at Nate's su uh, suggestion, I actually contacted the um, the Department of Open Meetings and they made a ruling that it was okay to use Dropbox. So that's why we can use Dropbox. Now, Nay, can you scroll down? There's 92 files that I've been working on. Oh my gosh. So anyway, this is what I've been doing for the past month or so. Um, if you Nate, if you go to Form B template at the bottom, I'm just gonna explain what a okay. Form B is. So anyway, these are inventory forms, and uh, most of they exist already for these properties, but most of them haven't been done in 50 years, and they're handwritten. So what I've done in the past um, uh, month is I've been going one by one and retyping what was handwritten, and then also adding what was in the National Registry inventory application. So Nate, if you go to 664 Main Street, I'll show you a complete, oh, if you, okay, it's fine, it, it's fine. Just go to 664 Main Street. I did all of them, so I created sheets for all of them. So anyway, this is, Nate, if you can scroll down, this is like a somewhat completed one. There's a picture, and then uh, if you keep going down, it has information, the historic name. So let's uh, go back up a little bit, Nate, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I typed all this over again. So you see it has like, um, the style, the historic name, the use, um, if there's been any alterations. If you scroll down a little bit, now you'll see. Um, but actually, Nate, I wanted to ask you about that. I went by the Conti Stevens house, and it's actually just in fair condition. And I know that they got CPA money. Have they used that money yet to do whatever they're supposed to do? They've done some work on the roof, but the rest hasn't. And so there's been... Um... They actually haven't fully accepted the CPA monies yet. Uh, yeah. There's still some discussions internally, I guess, uh, with the condominium oh, association. Surprised. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, you'll see that then there's an architectural section description. This is, uh, and then you go down and there's a historic narrative. And then um, one, keep going, and then a bibliography. So, uh, okay, so now that's that's what they should look like, except at the top, if you go back to the top, Nate, uh, you'll see that there's supposed to be a map there. So we need to do this for 40, uh, approximately 40 properties. Some of them are pretty much done. Nate, if you go to 670, oh, go to 695. Um, so this is like what most, a lot of them are like, they're, you know, I just, it doesn't look like I did, so you don't think I did so much work. This is what probably 10 or 15 of them are. They're just, there's nothing there. So keep going down. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so uh, you know, so I'm not like so. So now go to 675 Main Street, please. Now, Nate, this is why you I, I took pictures of every single property and I try to insert the picture here. And no matter what I do, it's sideways. So I'm going <laughs> to ask you if you can insert the pictures because I don't know how to do it. Oh, but yeah, no, that's fine. Are, the picture's yeah. there and also the maps. Yeah, now, if you yeah, go I... down, what's amazing is for about 10 of the properties, somebody hired some architects. Was it the Pioneer Valley Authority that did it? Or if you keep going down, Nate, and these are amazing. I mean, there's like oh, a yeah, photography. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at all that on the bottom. And there's about five or six of these that are pretty much done. They were done by Ruth, by Jeffrey Mellish and Gabriel Danello, TTL Architects, in September 2014. I don't know who hired them. Yeah, the town. Yeah, the town did. So we had we had received a grant from Mass Historic and um, they inventoried outbuildings in certain buildings. And so, right, they they're actually an architecture firm i think they're out of portland maine you know and they were um yeah they did a great job for however yeah, they, i wish we could hire them well, that's going to lead me to the next one so anyway so what i'm going to make us now that i transcribed some of these are almost done there's probably five or six that are almost done there's probably um there's a lot of architectural descriptions in the national uh, inventory thing so i've been retyping those on so they're mm -hmm. all in different various stages of completion I'm going to do a um, spreadsheet showing what's been done. I've recruited um, a master's student in architecture uh, from UMass, who Colleen Tully, who kindly said that she would devote one to two hours a week. And she said, I sent her a list, and she said she would do the architectural descriptions. So hopefully that will pan out. The big problem is going to be the historical significant um, section and uh, uh, so, uh, I want to show you something I bought. Elizabeth, you'll get, I got a, uh, can you see this, everyone? Elizabeth, this, I bought myself, my own carpenter in Morehouse. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, I've got it too, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so what we need, and Elizabeth, this is where I'm hopefully leaning on you. I just don't have the skills. To, I mean, I'm going to go through carpenter in Morehouse and cross-index. Like for instance, there's one house, uh, General Mattoon, who is a Civil War hero. I mean, an Evolutionary War Revolution. hero. Revolution. Yeah. And he, mm -hmm. so I got his. I I cut and pasted his Wikipedia entry and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll go through Carpenter and Morehouse, but we need to divvy up the the properties um, and do the historical significance section. Mm -hmm. Now, what I could do is, you know, I was thinking about applying for a CPA grant and trying to pay like someone like Hetty Startup to do it. But the thing is, um, we wouldn't get that money until next July 1st. Uh, so the question is, in the CPA grant application, which I'm happy to do, uh, is due next month. Should I go ahead and do it? Or we, do you think we can do the historical significance ourselves for these 30 some properties? Or probably twenty properties. I I I realize it's a delay, but I think it would be important to have somebody. I I just know Hetty Startup by reputation, is because it's not just individual houses you're looking at. You're looking at the whole way that community was settled. Well, and, actually, that stuff's already been done. If you look at the national um, inventory, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they have a. I mean, in fact, I would use that uh, as this. You know the. I would use that as the introduction um, for our application because it basically says why they chose these 40 some properties. It gives a history. It's pretty comprehensive. So in terms of the macro thing, I actually think that we have that done. It's the actual individual houses that need to be done. Um, does anyone feel want to take a whack at some of these houses? I'm, uh, um, or they, you know, uh, or should we wait and, and just do the best we can and see if we can get a cramp and hire someone down the line? Or um, I need some guidance on that. Uh, Bruce, uh, I I was wondering whether I mean I'm I'm not quite sure what historical significance means, and and I guess I I wonder whether people who write these things um, really know whether it would would uh, just do it from their personal point of view. I mean, it seems to be a 
somewhat subjective, somewhat I'm saying. Um, but uh, I mean, we can. Uh... So anyway, what I was thinking is that Steve, mm -hmm. since you've done so much of this, it would seem that 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 uh, a, a grant for um, to um, to engage somebody like Hetty, I'm not sure, or Greg Farmer is a fellow that I've used uh, a lot in the past for historic uh, um, work, but I'm not sure. Yes, I guess. But but some kind of architectural historian. If we could get somebody who would be willing to come, and I'm thinking, since you've done all this work, you could more or less set uh, um, exhibits up around the room. If we had a you know a room with a lot of pin boards up, and you put the thirty buildings up, uh, and we kind of look at the whole thing together, and and there's a, a small group of people with. Uh, with with a consultant and so forth, whether we could do it, whether it could be done that way, or does this really involve uh, just um, book research and and just looking at each building and then diving into yeah, some no, kind what, of uh, I don't know happened, how it's done. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. What happened right. last time is we had a great staff. We had Marian Adams, we had Ed Wilford, who I've tried to contact, but he's kind of disappeared. He's like. The town historian, uh, right. official town historian, and Susanna Fabing. And they did, I transcribed, I did the same thing for like about 150 of these houses. And then they would go on. What well, the great thing about Dropbox is everyone can go on at their own pace and do their own section. Um, uh, you guys all have, you guys all have access to that file now that you can, I mean, you can just go on it whenever you want. Um, so we basically, at the end, we, hired a grad student um, the UMass and he wrote the significance section but the actual individual research for the houses was done by volunteers and most of it is done it's so tedious you go to like the courthouse at Hampshire in Northampton and you literally see a record of who owned the house uh, at the beginning and, the, and you look at the deeds and Ed Wolford's a master at this there's all these little leaded coatings which are really obscure and then you can you start to research and see the people who actually own the houses and what they did um so that it's really tedious and uh i was hoping i was hoping that elizabeth would volunteer to, to do some of it because she's had such a i mean you've done this so much in your past i mean not do all of it but divvy it up and but are we or we can wait you know, it's all in place now. I'd say it's about one third done, and get a you know get a grant, you know, for seventy five hundred dollars, and hire someone like Hetty, who you know this is like second nature for her. I, I just hate to ask her to do it for nothing. You know, for nothing, I'm trying. No, to I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I was gonna just quickly. I'm gonna share a screen. Yes. So Steve's right. Some of it's you know you're doing um. Um, let's see, this is a, you know, like a title chain all the way back. So you can see the bibliography here and then, you know, doing like searching through tax records, um, you know, property search and then things, whether it's old maps or, you know, us census or town, um, data. So town records have been scanned. So, you know, if you find that the house was owned or built by someone, then it's like, you know, researching that a little bit to determine, you know, how do you tie it all together? So, it often reads like a you know a chronological um, yeah. history, especially during say the period of significance. And then you know what you know were the families or builders or what was the house associated with any events or movements you know whether it was you know um, so the architectural description right I mean that's great Steve you found someone you know that can just be you know someone who's adept at that can write that without having to know the history of the house but then it's this historical yeah, narrative I'm hoping this grad student Colleen who's really nice she said that she would do it and I gave her I didn't I gave her all the houses that needed architectural descriptions on Main Street there's some more on South uh, East Street and Northeast Street you know which if maybe if I know Bruce is overextended but if Bruce ever wanted to do a couple of them um, or, you know do them at your leisure you know one a week would make a huge they only have to be a paragraph or two, and one a week would make a huge dent. But like I said, you can go on Dropbox now, and you can 
you know, at your leisure, type in the thing yourself. I have a code. If you go back, um, um, you can go back to the Conky Stevens house, which is 664 Main Street. Mm -hmm. And I have a rough code. Um, the thing is, Steve, uh, when I was in architecture school in Melbourne, we had a, 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 a very intensive period in, in, uh, in my fourth year where yeah. the whole, we, we all were taught uh, this uh, as far as the history and architecture, Victorian architecture and Edwardian architecture of, of Melbourne was concerned and we knew all the sources and all this kind of stuff. And I, and, but it's different here. And so I, I, I kind of know what it okay. feels like to do this work, but I also know that I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm out of my depth here because I, I, I haven't been okay. trained to function here the way I have been to function in Australia. So I, I, I could choose to train myself, but I'm, that's, that's the problem. I'm not sure whether I'm, well, I the great news the is time can, to that. You can do whatever you, because we have Dropbox now and you can do it at your leisure. Um, yeah. You know, it, you know, hopefully Colleen, you know, will be able to do this. Um, and I've literally interviewed four other architects trying to get mm. them to do it. Uh, and yeah. she's the only one that said that would do it. Well, I hope so. I mean, I, I just don't feel it's uh, what I'm what I'm good at these days is a number of things, actually. But it, I don't include this in the list of things that I'm good at. So um so that's the problem. And I, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to be able to do it. And, and because I'm an architect, you, you think that I'm able to do it, but I was not trained here, you see. Well, and, you're, the, you're, the ex, you're the house ex. Look, I'm not putting any pressure on you. What yeah. I'm saying is right now it's up and running. There's a form B that's been created for every property. There's pictures. Uh, actually, it's a resource. The handbook is in. The handbook is up there, too. The National Registry is up there in both PDF and Word document form. Well, uh, let me let me have a look at it and see. I mean, it, it may be that there is uh, that maybe it's not as complicated or as involved as I'm thinking it is. Okay, uh, Elizabeth. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I would think a way to approach it would be to have a, if we can, a kind of a workshop where we can start to share the resources and explain what each of them is good for and how to proceed to other ones. Like okay. for example, architectural style is just one small piece, but then you wanna research the people, you wanna use all sure. those other types of online sources for that. And you probably have city directories and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know who the current person in um, the Jones, in Jones Special Collections is right now. But that would be a great place to start because their resources are really amazing for understanding the people. Okay. And then I would think, too, yes, that historical background of how the village was created of East Amherst. But there are layers after that. Okay. And the lay each layer, their neighborhoods, you know, it's okay. it's a living thing. And so I would think to try to make the case that this is an important bona fide historic district that you want to work and talk about how it's changed over time and and how it's functioned over time. So I think that's important to do all of it. So I think um and I, and I I like I think we should just get started with that kind of thing. And I think what generally happens is questions pop up, things happen, okay. things happen part of our discussion, and it just makes it much richer. So if we could okay. work together like that, so you sure did that. Yeah, in your, I mean, I went to your exhibit the other day and the way you documented uh, the different eras of, of Northampton was amazing. So mm -hmm. you could do the same thing for the, you know, this little neighborhood. Um, yeah, that only took a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, like, there's no race to do this. But what I'm saying is we now have the infrastructure um, to get it up and running. And um, I'm going to do, I'm going to start going through more how the, Carpenter Morehouse seems to be the resource that people quote. So I'm going to start going through the houses and just jotting down notes. Um, but I urge you guys to like, you know, just look at these different points. You know, like I said, some of them are almost done. Some of them are pretty much done. The ones that the architects that were hired by the town, those are done. They just need um, the maps and some more photographs. But they're all in different stages. So I just urge everyone to take a look and start to do what they can. Um, 
at least until our next meeting. Yeah, and, and remember, Carpenter and Morehouse is yeah. one source. I yeah, mean, it's very exactly. good. I know. I but, yeah. And often quoted, and sometimes yeah. the often quoted ones are just often quoted and okay. may not be the best. So Okay, I defer to your expertise, believe me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, that's my report. <laughs> well, Steve, thank you from all of us for this tremendous amount of work. Uh, it really set the stage for all of the next work that we're all going to have to participate in um, and, and we I'm can gonna, think about okay. yeah how, how to go about that so i think i'm going to go ahead and apply uh, fill out the cpa application even though it's a year from now um you know what do you guys think should i just go and i guess we could if we don't use it we could always return the money is, is that right I, yeah i think declining money would be a better position than wanting money Okay, then I'll, that's going to be my next thing. I'm going to fill out the, yeah, um, this, uh, the CPA this application. This uh, meeting is still going on. I think it'll run another 10. Okay. I think that's a good idea. And okay, um, let's see where we get from there. Um, I'm going to, once I get oh, past my COVID, I'll try to talk to some people at Amherst College who are also involved in uh, interesting Amherst history. So okay. let's see if I can find anybody who... We could interest but before in I, I actually uh, steal the floor, does everyone know how to access to get to the Dropbox account now and do? Um, uh, Should I, I'll, I could send an email out again. Is that? I okay. I, th I think it's already been sent out. So okay. uh, I'm just looking at my Dropbox, and uh, I think. I have East Amherst, and when I look at East Amherst, it's, up, I, it's under the East Amherst file. Yep. So if you click on that, there's 92 files. Yep. Got them. Okay. Great. Yeah. I mean, I will. I will say. I think the the head of special collections has been vacant that position at the library for a bit. Yeah. So that is a a little bit of a gap in terms of um, you know, that knowledge. So I think we still can use special collections, but you know, if someone's really familiar with it, they can. It's it's you know. It'll just be faster. They could really mm. help us direct us where how where to go and what resources to use. So I think if we're you know we still I think still I I agree special collections has a lot. Um, things are online. I know that when the architects did it back in fourteen, Steve, they had accounts with okay. you know ancestry.com or different websites to be able to look into oh, things. Right, and yeah. so I don't know if the library has access to those, but that makes doing the research a lot easier if you can access you know certain websites. Mm. Okay. Uh, Bruce? Um, what I uh, know, I think I know about Dropbox is that uh, um, that I, I don't know what the size of the accumulated files in that Dropbox are, Steve. Yeah. Uh, but if they're big, it may be that I, I have a, you know, a purchased account for Dropbox. And so that means I can access quite a large uh, body of data. But if uh, folks that don't have that may be limited. Um, I know, for example, when I was with, well, I, with uh, the NACF, uh, which uses Dropbox, I separated the NACF files into one file, which is where all of the the, the, the bulk data and everything reposes. And then I have a current folder, which is what I share on Dropbox so that people who don't have uh, purchased accounts who are just using the free account um, uh, uh, can access it because I don't put, uh, you know, I only put the minutes for the current year, for example, in there and things like that. Yeah. So I don't know what the, so, so the, I guess my long-winded point here is, uh, Bruce, well, no, that doesn't matter. The, doesn't uh, matter. My, my experience is that us as individuals mm -hmm. will be limited in what we can access if we have if we are using the freely available um app so to speak yeah so, so my if, so, yeah. if you can't get in or if you can't see something it could be due to the fact that you haven't purchased the larger entitlement so I, mean, I, I have um yeah right now i mean this is a two gig account that this folder is in is only 178 megs are used so you know there's much of this is still unused so i think that well, you that's know, if it sound much, yeah. If it seems like we're reaching the uh, capacity of the online folder, I can um, I can manage that with IT. I could try to figure that out. So I think right now we have plenty of capacity on the online storage to keep uploading information. Yeah, no, like I said, we use this for the North 
for the Lincoln North Prospect Sunset one, which was over 200 properties and everybody could access it and we didn't have any problems with capacity. So, okay, sounds like my concern is moot. Good, okay. I'm glad about that. Okay. Uh, I also have a, a, a meeting I'm supposed to be at about 10 minutes ago. Um, oh. I'm just wondering, uh, I called them and said I'm gonna be a little late, but I'm, how, how, much, how much more do we have to go? I'm so curious. we have one other item that would be useful to try to move along on if we can, and that's the amending the bylaw to include the review of parking lots and other structures. Um, do you want to move to that at this point? Uh, or yeah, is that I too guess big just, a conversation? It could be too big. I don't have much to share. I just want to go back to Steve. Would you, you know, I think I would like the commission to vote to like, you know, authorize Steve and say staff and the chair to write the CPA proposal and we oh. could have a dollar amount, maybe up to 15,000. I mean, I don't know what you're thinking, Steve, but we could. Last time yeah. we did it for 5,000 and okay. uh, I, I would do it for 7,500, I think. Well, yeah, let's see. A lot of then, this done in the meantime. So, yeah, I'll, I'll move that uh, I'll move that the limit authorized limit be ten thousand, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and everything else you said, uh, Nate, that uh, Steve and uh, staff uh, be authorized to on, on behalf of the commission to uh, make a, a prepare a, a CPA application. Um, sh sh should we condition that it is uh, that we review it before it's submitted, or are we comfortable just authorizing uh, Steve and you to? Submitted on our behalf. I'm probably yeah. comfortable on the latter. The, How um, soon the, do you have to submit it? The proposals are due September 30th, and so I'm thinking we'd probably have a meeting in September. Just um, as probably the next one of the next orders of business, there is an application or two that will be submitted soon. So we'd have to meet. You know, in it could be in later. You know, in the last third or fourth week of September, but we could have a. I think there's still time then for the commission to review it. I um I downloaded on the Dropbox is the application the blank application for um for the CPA grant and I will start filling it out and you can actually access it and look at what I'm writing um and edit it or make suggestions as that as you please. Okay, I've submitted a lot of CPA applications, um, not so much for this sort of thing, but generally speaking, so I I, I can. Uh, we can talk, Steve, if you if you if you choose. Okay, I'm going to start this week, so yeah, because I'm going away next week. Okay. Uh, do we have a second for that? For Bruce's, uh, I second. Motion? Thank you, Nicole. Uh, any other discussion before we vote? Okay, Bruce. Hi. Steve. Yes. Nicole. Yes. Karen. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Frida. And I also approve it. So uh, you have yes. our approval and our thanks for moving forward um, on this no application. Problem. Yes, Steve. Very well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Nate, can we have a brief conversation about the parking lots, adding the parking lots to the bylaw? Yeah, I mean, we talked about this previously, and I haven't, you know, there hasn't been any necessarily changes. Um, but I think that, you know, we can regulate a part the parking. We can't regulate the use, so we just have to be careful with that. I put in other structures. Um, for instance, the way we define the bylaw right now, we define a structure as, you know, it can be other than a building, it can be these things, and then we exempt any structure that's at grade, and so. Um, one mm -hmm. thing that we see often is um, like retention areas that have mm -hmm. overflow pipes or other HVAC or other sometimes um, kind of, you know, if it's if it's utilities associated with the building, we consider a part of the building, but there can be standalone utilities and other things that could be considered a structure, say like overflow pipes or drainage structures. So, you know, uh, you know, um, even like holding tanks or things. And so my thought is, if we were going to change the bylaw, we include parking, and then we also define structure to also be, you know, drainage or utility structures. Um, right now, we're doing that because it's. Um, but I'd like to just you know clear have some clarifications in the bylaw. So you know that that's all. When I added that, I think, you know, what we're seeing more say on the planning board, for instance, is um, you know, everyone's going all electric. They're trying to do uh, stormwater management all on site. And so we're just seeing different different types of what, what would be considered structure in the local historic district bylaw 
um, as happening. And so I just wanted to add some words in there just to clarify that. So it's not, you know, so staff, future staff understands what we're doing. And it's also helpful for applicants to know that too. Um, and then, you know, once we have some language, we can review it at the next meeting and it, you know, figure out how to move that forward as a actual. Um, and I, I was going to say that town council was, um, the town attorney was also looking at the general bylaw. This is part of the general bylaws. And there's one section of the bylaw that um, I think we need to replace as well. And so we're just going to wrap it all up into, um, into it. And I think there's a section of the bylaw that says that members are mandated. <laughs> this is kind of funny to, um, to uh, stay on the commission after their terms expired until a new member has been appointed and I actually don't think we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we can say that. <laughs> and so, yeah, we... <laughs> that's for sure. It's a pretty so, interesting idea. I think so you I, could uh, say encouraged. I know. I think we say actually are required to remain on the commission, and so we have to change that. So, anyways, yeah. I was going to have these, you know, few changes be all kind of yeah. folded in together, and sometime I, later this year. Okay. Yeah, we... Thank you for looking into that. For oh, us. great! For, thanks for pursuing this. Yeah. All okay. right. Um, do we have any unanticipated items? Uh, public comment? There's one member of the public still here. Uh, Hilda. Oh, yeah, your hand, your hand is raised. All right, Hilda. Hilda. Oh. Am I talking? Yep. This member yep. of the public would like to be able to get the packets when you guys get it, if it's possible, because I had a hard time following it when you weren't showing anything on the screen. So can you add me to the list, Nate? Sure, yeah. I mean, I we put everything online, so it's also an online. I, it's all I online. didn't find it. I looked for it. I didn't find okay. it. All right. I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, shall we establish a next meeting date? Sure. I was looking at the week of September 18th, if that is I good will. for folks. Um, I'll be, be in the, I'll be in Europe, but um, the problem with that is that Karen has already established a rather gruesome <laughs> track record for attendance from anywhere on the planet, and I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I'm up for that. We'll see. But anyway, uh, I tried it once. I would not recommend it. <laughs> So I might just uh, uh, miss the next meeting. I okay. haven't missed a meeting since. Well, the one I forgot. No, that was somebody else's meeting. I think I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm pretty regular. So maybe I'm okay to miss one. So when is this? Uh, September eighteenth. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'd recommended that At week three? or the or the following week. I don't know. You know, it's a. I guess it's dependent on the uh, availability of the commissioners. Yeah, on Monday the eighteenth. Um, I've got to do a kid pickup. I don't normally do the Monday pickup. Um, so that's going to be like smack in the middle of the meeting. I won't be available until about 3.15, 3 3.30. Okay. What about the 25th? Is that better for everyone? For me. Yeah. Um, that's... I can't do it. No, that's Yom Kippur. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was trying to turn on my cal all my calendars. Um, no, I can't do it either. Would we try the 19th, Tuesday the 19th? I mean, I'm, I'm you know, that. Yeah, can do that. Yep, Tuesday the 19th I can do. I can do it. All right, that looks like it's good. So Tuesday the 19th at 3. Great. And are, will these meetings always be on Zoom? Yeah, I think for the foreseeable future, the um, we're not the town. We were not going to go to hybrid format. That that's really complicated, and so um, there may be some uh, the town town manager's office may be putting out some some information in the fall, but for now it's, you know, for the next few months, it's over Zoom. Hmm. Can I uh, leave for my 
a late appointment. Is that okay? You can just I I move that we adjourn. I second. Yep. Uh, Karen. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Frida. Yes. Steve. Yes. Nicole. Yes. Okay, thank you everyone for coming and especially Steve for all of your work. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, like, you know, it's actually exciting because we can actually get this one done. You know, uh, it would be a big thing for the town. It deserves to happen. And I think the town is will uh, will be happy, we'll do it. So it's really exciting. At least for me. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah. Okay. So I'll you know, I'll send the, the Dropbox email link out again just so it's on top great. of the inbox so yeah great yeah okay, thanks thank everyone you, Nate, for all your support oh thanks thank you thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye bye bye, bye.